I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this. So let's open up Cinema 4D and get started. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D and get started. So um, if you have followed the previous tutorial, which you should have, is how to create an arrow. Um, I didn't mention one small thing and that was uh, how I've done the metal part on top of the arrow to give some extra details. So if we zoom on on that arrow and go to the polygon selection tool and choose our live selection tool with only visible elements, and uh, we just select this fragment here. And actually I'm going to, um, well, just continue like this. And actually we only need that top part. So something like that should work fine. Okay. And there we go. Um, actually I'm going to trim that last layer here. So we only have that top part. And we don't need the other side actually. So what I'm going to do is to right click and I'm going to split that layer. So split right here. Okay. So now we have two objects, uh, one separate. So I'm going to uh, call this metal part. And also I'm going to move it up a little bit and move it a little bit more to the right. And then I'm also going to well, actually, I'm not going to move it to the right, so I'm going to reposition it, but I'm just going to scale it up a little bit, so it's actually getting a little bit wider. And then I'm going back here and use like um, a symmetry object. I'm going to place that into my dart here and place the metal part in my symmetry. And then you will see that we have now um, this part on both sides here, so we can see it right here. And then we are going to create another symmetry object, uh, which is going to uh, use that symmetry on the bottom part. So we need it to be in uh, X and Z. And then we have it right here. And if we move it up a little bit, uh, we can see now, uh, well, actually, if we move it just a little bit up, well, this is way too much, of course. Uh, the move tool, okay, it's right over here. Move it up just a touch. So we can see the separation here. Uh, we're going to get something really cool. So uh, once you've done that, right click, create a new material here and rename this to Chrome, for example. And well, let's take a dark gray color, reflectance, delete the specular, and add a Beckman. And for the Fresnel, we are going to use a uh, conductor chromatic, uh, chromium, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have some Chrome. And we can also add like maybe a small bump texture here. So go to bump, um, and bump map, and we're going to add noise here. For the noise, I'm going to choose a Luca. Okay, scale to maybe something like 10 and then apply it to our uh, symmetry above and change the projection of that uh, material to cubic. Let's see what uh, this gives us in the render. Okay, so we can add a little bit more roughness and the bump is way too big. So we need to scale down our texture. Um, so let's do that first. Uh, let's go back here, scale it down to like something like 10 and also add some roughness here. And let's see that again. Okay, better. Um, but I'm going to delete my physical sky because I don't really like the reflections there. So what I will do is um, I'm going to use an aerial light here and actually I'm going to do that later. So let's just render this out with um, a different kind of physical sky just to see uh, the reflections with a different method. So I'll go back to basic load sky preset and there we go. Just to see what we're getting here. Okay. So it's really reflective. I'm going to lower down my bump here. Um, my uh, roughness to like 50% maybe and a bump of um, a lower scale. So maybe something like two. So we just need li like some small grunge in our texture. All right, better. So now we, we do have that sky and that's not really fitting for the kind of scene that we're trying to uh, emulate, but we're going to keep it like this. So select everything and hold Alt and press G on the keyboard to group this arrow and call it arrow. And then we're going to create a new scene uh, just so we can start fresh. And we're going to 
change the render settings by clicking here uh, to full HD. So uh, 1920 by 1080, okay. Um, all frames, change the frame rate to 24. And also, um, well, actually we will we'll do that first. Uh, hold control, press D on the keyboard. So we get the project settings here and also change the project set as project settings to 24 frames per second. And that way uh, we are going to render a little bit faster. And yeah, so that's a little trick to uh, get lower renders because 24 is still a great number and you have six frames less per second to, to render. So uh, let's change the render type to physical render engine. And that's actually it for now. Um, oh yeah, we'll keep everything as it is right now. Save that project file as well. Okay, so we can save it, um, yeah, enough so it doesn't crash. And then we are going to add like um, a tube here. And we are going to position that tube, uh, hold, uh, press R, R on the keyboard to rotate it 90 degrees, hold shift while rotating so it snaps. And then I'm going to make this like something, uh, like a, a ring kind of type. And there we go. And I'm also going to click on that cube, go to object, and I'm going to add a fillet. And here I'm going to add a radius of something uh, small enough, something like one should work fine. And you can also see the segments in the rotation here uh, are way too low, so I'm going to change them just to like something like 80 and see how uh, this gives us, uh, what this gives us as a result. And I still think it could be more detailed. So I'm going to change them to 100 and go uh, right here at display and choose the lines method here so I can actually see how many segments I have. And this seems fine. Okay, so now we have something like that. We can also change maybe the radius to two and the segments to one. So we get my, like a nice clean cut here. And let's render that just to, to preview it. Okay, so it's quite hard still. So I'm going to delete the font tag here and see what this gives us. Actually, we can keep the font tag. I'm going to do something different. So click on that tube and go to the bevel uh, option here and drag that bevel, bevel in our tube and select use angle here and change the offset to 0.4 or 0.3 and now we're going to see a bevel on a bevel and this is going to give us a nice de detail here so you can see it right here we have a nice bevel and we can actually lower it down to 0.2 even and maybe add a two divisions here two subdivisions and this is for real close-ups, but you can see these bevels really uh, change the level of detail to a simple object like this. So it's really nice to have these. Okay, so now let's add our text. Uh, go to MoGraph and apply a MoGraph text. And I'm going to check to my tube. Um, we have a height of 80, okay? For our text, we can also change it up to 80 and then move it a little bit more towards the front. So it's actually centering the circle. Click on the text and also center it by alignment here. So we have it nice in the middle here and drag it down something like so. And I'm going to uh, enter the initials of tolerated cinematic. So that's TC. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to change the font to something like um, a little bit more thickened out. Uh, and a yeah, like, um, let me see for a second. Let's take this next a bold for now. Um, but yeah, you can just find whatever font you want um, to use. I'm going to scale up my text and like lower the horizontal spacing so it's more uh, like in each other. And you can really model anything, put any logo in there uh, to whatever you want. Um, but I'm going to use this text for now. So uh, I'm going to scale, well, I'm not going to scale it up right uh, this way. I'm going back to the text, change the height just a little bit so we can fill up our circle. Move it a little bit more to the right. And there we go. Move it a little, <laughs> move it a little bit to the back here. Uh, and there we go. So we don't see that top part here. Okay. Then go to the text also to the caps and I'm going to add a fillet cap to uh, the front and the back and change it to one as well. There we go. Maybe it can be, uh, can be bigger than one. So change it maybe to uh, something like two and constrain it. So uh, it's not coming out of our uh, circle here. So move it a little bit more towards the back. 
as well. And then we can do the same thing with the bevel, but for this we will need another approach. Um, because if you're going to see the bevel and if we apply this to the text, you're going to see that we can see through our text and that's not what we want. So delete that bevel, click on the uh, text here and I'm actually going to rename it to TC and this to ring. Um, and the TC, I'm going to connect it with the connect tool here and I'm going to uh, place the TC in there and then I'm going to apply a bevel and I'm going to click on the bevel, click on the connect and hold alt and press G so it's grouped. Uh, TC, rename it again. And now if we check uh, use angle, we will have uh, this kind of result also changed to 0.3 or 0.2. And now we are going to get that nice bevel again. So you can see really we have a nice bevel and then this nice highlight on top of that bevel. And I really love uh, this way of working with bevels actually. Um, so we have our TC logo. We can actually move it a little bit more to the bottom so it's more filled out and it's actually evening out the complete circle so we have some kind of uh, nice composition here so render this out see what this gives us this is actually looking pretty cool already um, and then what we need is uh, we're going to create a sphere and we're going to make it really really large then um, we just need like a rounded uh, part uh, inside the circle so I'm going to position it with the coordinates more towards the back so it's actually intersecting uh, our circle like this, something like this. We can also click on the sphere, go to object and change the segments to something like 90 or maybe even higher, 120. So we get a nice uh, amount of detail here and change it maybe to a hexagon or maybe um, actually, um, okay, so, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to spell this. Um, I'm not sure how to spell it out, but um, doesn't matter. So we get some nice uh, triangles and that way I think it's going to give a better result. So uh, next choose a cylinder and rotate that cylinder in uh, this manner. So it's actually just like uh, our ring here and then also make it intersect with that ring. The height we can change it to 80 uh, or maybe even lower something like 40 and then just move it um, so it intersects the circle and this sphere. And actually what we're trying to do is, uh, well, if we add a bool here and we add that sphere in here and also the cylinder, we click on the bool and we do an intersect. We're going to get, uh, well, actually, if we change the uh, order here. I'm just going to try this out here. I'm not sure if it's working. Okay, so and the, the cylinder wasn't long enough. Just make sure it's not coming out like this here so we can shorten it down and just move it forward so we get this nice bulge uh, effect that we are, are having right here and then just scale it up so it's filling up the ring and now we have like a bulgy background um, so that's pretty cool. So now we have our logo. Let's select everything, hold alt and press G and rename it to logo. Actually, uh, I'm not sure why we still have this here. Um, I think this should all be in here. I'm not sure why that come out, uh, comes out, but okay. We have everything like so in our logo and we can start uh, doing some textures now. So uh, go to create new material um, and also go to the color and I'm going to use a layer setup. So texture layer, go into that layer and we're going to add like uh, a shader color and change this color to a green uh, dark well, actually uh, a kind of desaturated green, um, but more towards the actual uh, green. So trying to find that correct green here. Okay, something like this, uh, some army kind of color. And then I'm going to add an image as well. So some kind of Grinch metal that you can find on Google by searching grunge, metal, texture, whatever. Uh, just take something that you like, uh, maybe try something different like this here and use, uh, well, yes, copy the files, the uh, location of this Cinema 4D file and then just play around with these uh, settings here. So I'm going to try overlay and see what this gives us if we lower this. And if we're going to apply this to our circle here and change the projection to cubic, and render this out, see what this gives us. And of course, we have a ugly reflection. So I'm going to delete the reflectance for now. 
just so we can see the color here on our texture. This is already looking pretty cool. Uh, what you can do as well is go back to that layer setup uh, for the color and maybe add like a noise and if we go into that noise uh, changes like to uh, wavy turbulence and like if we make this a little bit bigger here first change the low clip so we get some nice contrast you can see these kind of effects here and if we change that to like uh, multiply uh, we're going to get some nice dirt textures on there so we can lower of course the opacity a little bit more uh, play a little bit more with the low clip and the high clip and maybe with the scale, uh, whatever you want to. So maybe change it to uh, 300 here. If we're going to render this out, we're going to get these dirt patches on here. So that's also pretty cool. Something like this should work fine. Okay, so what I will do now is uh, go to the ref uh, reflectance channel here and add a Beckman. And for the layer Fresnel, I'm going to change it to a conductor iron. Okay, an iron texture. Add just a little bit of uh, roughness and just render it out so we can see what we have here. So of course we need a background with some kind of reflections to give. So what I have here is I add a sky and I add a new material and that material I'm going to rename it to HDRI and an HDRI is just uh, used to give some reflections and some light to the scene. So I'm going to disable everything and select the luminance channel here and load an image. So I do have uh, these HGRIs here that you can also find online and uh, just search uh, for some HGRIs. I'm going to use um, this one, I guess, and just import it and just test it out. See what, see if the reflections are what you're looking for. And this is actually already pretty nice. So um, this is actually what we're looking for, uh, except for the harsh um, specular here on the side. So I'm going back to my material, material, rename it to logo and go through the reflectance and just take away the specular and lower the reflectance, uh, reflection uh, like by a lot. Um, maybe increase it just a touch. Okay, and change the layer color to a green color as well. I can actually darken it just a touch. And now we're getting something like this, but actually I want kind of like hard um, reflections here. Okay, so this is pretty cool for now, so let's keep it. And then just duplicate this to RTC here. And let's see what we get. Okay. And then you can also like play with some uh, spotlights. So, uh, well, some point lights, so add a light. Position one over here, uh, bring it back a little bit and add like a soft shadow. Render this out. And now we got these nice highlights here on the edges. Uh, this, this is all because of the bevels that we added. So this is looking really cool in my opinion already. So uh, yeah, uh, this is what we get. We can also add a background and choose a use color on and change it to a black color. So we get a nice black color to see it on the contrast of the of our background and actually I'm not sure why it's not showing so put it on in the render engine and I'm getting a gray of course we are seeing the sky so right click on our uh, click on the sky right click cinema 4d tags go to compositing and check off scene by camera and now we're going to get a black background so now we get some more contrast of our logo and see how nice this looks so it's really stunning already how this is actually looking um, then what we need as well is duplicate our logo texture right here and rename this to inner logo and change the um, layer color to a well just white and also add like a lot more roughness and place it in the center here so let's see what we get here and okay pretty cool as well but way too much reflection for what we need. Okay. Actually, you can use some reflections, but in the original one, it doesn't have any reflections, so I'm going to keep them away. And actually, um, I'm going to change my color here of my layer to a white level. 
Okay, and see what we have here. Uh, check off the reflectance just for now so we can see our texture itself. And we don't have enough light, so add another light here. Position it more towards the center here and just lower the opacity so we only see a little bit of the background here. Something like 10 should work, okay. Pretty cool, but I'm going to delete, or actually I'm going to lower the um, scale here, the global scale of my uh, noise here. And I'm also going to add more uh, variations. So how I should do that is octaves here. Change this to something like 10. And change the seat a little bit. Okay, go back and also lower the opacity like a lot because I think the uh, noise isn't really uh, adding up to our image here. I'm going to delete this grunge uh, image and I'm going to add another image. All right, and also check if your um, layer, actually the texture should be on the bool and also change it to projection cubic. All right. And change the uh, length accordingly so we can see that it's like repeating itself. So just scale it up until it's not repeating itself anymore. So I think 250, 250 should be okay. And then just move it a little bit like so and move it up. There we go. And then you can increase uh, the opacity for that light here. Okay, so we get something like this. Uh, we can also use a multiply here and lower the opacity a bit. So we only get some details and there we go. Uh, we can maybe also, <laughs> maybe also go to luminance and just add a little bit of luminance. So it's actually uh, lining itself up a little bit and that way we don't have to add more lights. But then we can also increase the opacity here of our top layer to something a little bit uh, heavier. Actually, just max it out and lower the luminance. Okay, there we go. So I think I, I kind of like this one and we're kind of personalizing it. I'm not really uh, concentrating on the actual result that I'm just showing something that I prefer more than the original result. So uh, I really like these rim lights. Of course, in the original uh, version, it has less reflection, so you can take them down. Uh, if you want to, so we can uh, go over here, play with this, make it uh, darker, and that way you won't see that many many reflections in your text, and also uh, brighten the colors up uh, right here if you want to. So uh, it's really like whatever you want to uh, use here. So if you want something more like this, you can do so. But I did prefer what I, I was getting actually, so I'm going to change it back. And there we go. Um, just for this texture, I'm not sure. I think it's good giving a little bit too much detail here, so I'm also going to uh, check this for now. Okay, so let's keep it as it is right now and add a camera and go in that camera by clicking on this icon here and then just zero everything out except for the Z. Uh, so then position it wherever you want to frame it, something like right over here, go to the beginning of our timeline, maybe change our um, frames and the end frame to 140 so we can get a longer result here. Click on the stopwatch at the beginning of our timeline, go to the end of your timeline and move the camera backwards just a little bit and click uh, again on that stopwatch and now we're going to get a nice animation like this okay and um, then what you need to do as well is go to like uh, 60 frames and click on your logo right click and cinema 4d text display then i'm going to use uh, visibility here click on our stopwatch move one frame and change it to zero there we go so now we have it showing not showing Go back to that one frame here where it's visible 
we're going to add a text now, MoGraph text. Um, and actually, we can actually delete uh, this text and just copy uh, this one here. So let's TC and hold Alt and drag it out. Uh, well, actually, not Alt, hold Control and drag it out. Now we have a copy. I'm going to change the text to um, actually chlorated cinematics. And of course, lower the height. And there we go. Also, disable the constraint here. I'm actually going to make this a little bit larger so I can see more. And go to caps, constraint, check it off so we don't get um, the issues here. And also change the depth to something like 25. And change the caps to 1. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit to see my caps a little bit more clearly. Uh, so let's change it to 0.5 and the bevel, let's change it to 0.05. And now we get a bevel that's accordingly uh, to the, um, well, to the size of our text. Okay, so we have something like this. Um, let's move back. And actually, I messed up my camera. So I need to zero everything out again. Okay, there we go. I'm going to right click on my camera and add a protect tag, protection. So now if I want to move, I can't. Okay, so tolerate cinematics. And there we go and go to the point where it's still visible here so it's 60 and right click cinema 4d text display use visibility click on the visibility point here change it to zero move ahead one frame and change it to zero And actually we need to do it the other way around. So here it should be zero, click on the stopwatch, move one frame and change it to 100. So once the logo disappears, the text appears here. And actually I'm going to make it just a tiny bit smaller as well. Something like this, okay. And there we go. So this is actually what I was looking for. Then what we need to do is go to simulate and go to particles, add an emitter and I'm going to um, click on my emitter, make it a little bit bigger. So just scale it up. And I'm going to toggle myself out of my camera so I can see um, my emitter here. And it's actually um, the opposite way. So we can rotate it 180 degrees. Now it's going to move towards the camera and actually we can rotate it just a tiny bit, a bit like offset. So it's actually moving past the camera. So do it like this. And let's start it over here, make it bigger. Now we get something like this. Of course, the speed is a little bit too fast here. And actually, uh, we don't need that emitter to be that high. So I'm going to lower it down here. And the speed, I'm going to change it to uh, maybe something like 500 and see what we get. We have, uh, let's change the birth rate to 7. And for now, let's keep it at that and go back to our logo, uh, well, our arrow project, copy our arrow, go back to arrow intro, paste it here. Um, paste it here. I didn't paste it. Go back and copy it. Uh, let's try it again. Edit, copy and paste. Okay, there we have our arrow. Paste that arrow in our emitter and see uh, if we go on emitter and show objects, it's going to show our arrows now. And actually the rotation is still not that great. So uh, we'll have to change the rotation a little bit, change it back to zero. Oh, well actually uh, change the arrow here itself to, to uh, follow the actual motion here. So change it to the same emitter rotation here. So I guess.
and actually uh, we're kind of messing up things so I'm going to rotate them like facing the right way okay zero this out again and try it again actually we don't need to rotate it, it was just like a little mistake uh, on my side here okay we can scale up the arrow uh, like this so it's actually in the same kind of um, ratio of our logo here move the emitter a little bit more towards the back and also lower the um, birth rate well actually you can keep it at seven but maybe change the speed to a thousand and change the birth rate to something like three okay there we go and uh, let's see in the camera how uh, this is looking and okay this is looking pretty cool actually We actually only already need them to be spawning here. So what we'll do is um, actually also increase the speed to something like 2000. It can be a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. What we need to do is make sure that they don't go through the um, logo itself. So I'm going to scale up my emitter as well here. I'm actually just the emitter. So emitter and just change the size a little bit more to something like that and move it a little bit more to the to the left here okay and just try to make sure it's not passing through our logo you can change that by changing the seeds and now we have something like this and I think this is already looking pretty good okay we have our arrows uh, what we do need is one arrow separately so click on our arrow control and drag it out and now we have one separate arrow um, go out of our camera and move this towards the front of our camera here so maybe a little bit more here and click on the stopwatch you go to uh, frame 60 just make sure it's actually passing through or forward um, well in front of the camera so you can't actually see anything anymore so we need to make sure this is happening um, to do that actually I'm going to disable every single effect here to do that um, you can actually click or click again and then it's going to click this away uh, we don't need any keyframes for now. Uh, we need our arrow to just be in front of our, well actually hold shift to hold control and shift and click again if we are still seeing it. Okay, so move it like, like this here. I think this is a great location to, to end. So what we need is just animate the arrow this way. So click out of the camera and only play with the Z. So it's passing like this. Go over here, paste it over here, go back to the um, first uh, frame here, click on the stopwatch, go to frame 60 and a little bit, 65 or so, and make it pass through our camera. And now if we are going to play this back, we should see it passing our TC here. Okay, Actually it's a little bit too soon, so I'm going to move our keyframe a little bit backwards. okay this is great uh, actually still a little bit too fast so okay almost there I think this is going to be perfect okay so now we have it changing in text and there we go so now we have something like this this is our text can still play a little bit more with the lights maybe there is like not enough light in the front so I'm going to brighten this up even more to 35 and change the shadows as well maybe move it a little bit more towards the front and lower the opacity of the top light here just play around with everything we can also duplicate that line and put it on the bottom here so uh, a little bit more towards the bottom more to the right maybe and a little bit, little bit more to the front and just play around with uh, with everything okay tolerated cinematics I'm going to lower uh, the tolerated cinematics depth as well so I'm going to change it to something like 5 and play this again and I'm just going to pause it right here and see if this arrow is looking fine and there we go okay uh, of course we are going to color grade everything afterwards and, and after effects and add some motion blur to our 
uh, arrows and stuff, so uh, that's okay. So now we can just hit render and uh, work on this uh, in After Effects to finish it off. So um, let's uh, go to the render settings, check alpha channel here, and put it in the location. Just make sure you have alpha channel and physical render engine uh, selected. And that's it for this tutorial. See you in the next part. So bye.